Amen. Praise the Lord and good evening. We'll bring you greetings from the Greater Works Apostolic New Life Center in the city of Champions. That's Inglewood, California. We're thanking God once again for you, our viewing audience, here on this evening. And then we're thanking God for uh, the saints who are present here in the temple. Amen. We're going to go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. We appreciate you, Lord, for allowing us to see this day that we've never seen before. We thank you, Lord, right now for your grace and your mercy being renewed on today. We thank you, Lord, for blessing your servant to decrease that your word may increase in the hearts, the minds, and the ears of your people. We thank you, Lord, for your deliverance and salvation of this word. We thank you, Lord, right now for repentance. Lord, bless us, Lord, to keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you at all times. So we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Amen. We're giving honor to God, who is the head of our lives, giving honor to the two angels of this house. Amen. Uh, District Elder Forest Day Fights, the first, and also Lady Evangelist Valerie Fights. And then we're also giving honor to my wife, Minister uh, Melissa, Sister Makisha, and then uh, Minister Nathan, Sister Doris, all of the saints who are here, the families who are here on tonight, amen. We're thanking God for uh, being here on another terrific Tuesday uh, night Bible study, amen. We're going to go ahead and go forth in uh, God's word on tonight. Uh, we want to go to the book of Galatians, and that is uh, in the New Testament, starting at chapter number 5. And we're going to go from verses 22 through 26. We know that a lot of things are uh, happening uh, this year. Amen. We're only in the fourth month <laughs> of this year. And this year has already been a very arduous and tedious yes. 2021. Amen. From January 1st to now has been definitely a challenge, but we are victorious. Why are we victorious? We're victorious because we are the covenant yes. people of God. Yes. The yes. things that have happened and transpired according to scripture, amen, revelatory knowledge, it is supposed to happen in the last days. Yes. We are living in the last days. We used to say the eve. We're living in the last days. Amen. And the Lord is soon to come. All the signs are pointing towards his coming. Yes. And so we're here not to frolic and waste time and look important and sound intelligent. That's all good. But we're here for preparation for the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes. We're here not to get ready. We're preparing readiness. That is the focus of the day. Readiness. Not just getting ready, yes. but readiness being yes. ready. When you're already ready or you're already prepared for a natural disaster, uh, you're already prepared for something maybe that is meant to harm you, yes. you don't have to think about getting ready or you know, putting things together and, uh, and, and, and straggling for information or tools, you're already prepared. Yes. And then all you have to do is ascend. See, when you're ready, like the Bible says, when he cracks the sky, the Lord cracks the sky, <clears throat> and the trump is sounding, yes. amen, you're already prepared yes. for the ascension, mm -hmm. the rapture. Amen. So we're going to read some things that are important and uh, things that are to our knowledge, learning of knowledge and preparation out of Galatians. Amen. Our good friend, our apostle in due time, by the name of Paul, was speaking at this moment 
and he was encouraging, amen, uh, the folks in Galatia. And so we're going to start at verse 22, chapter 5, verse 22 of Galatians through 26, and it reads, But the fruit of the Spirit <coughs> is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. We're going to stop right there. Thank you, Minister Melissa. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Amen. We just read the book of Galatians. Uh, this is in the New Testament. Amen. And uh, right after 2 Corinthians, these are one of the epistles that uh, Brother Paul was writing to the different churches. Amen. And so uh, we just read Galatians 5, 22 through 26. For a short span of time, we want to speak to your hearing. Amen. The whole fruit and nothing but the fruit. The whole fruit and nothing but the fruit. So, what are you talking about, Brother Fox? Well, we've heard the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. As we normally would reflect on the fruit of the Spirit, and I've done it before in times past, sometimes we refer to Amen. To this chapter as fruits, plural. So we say, oh, you got to have the fruits of the Spirit. You got to have love. You got to have joy and, and all, all the other good fruits. But it's not a basket of fruit spiritually that God wants us to consume. You can't pick and choose various fruits. He has one fruit of His Word. And in those, in that one fruit, there are ingredients that make up the one fruit. So I can't have the fruit of love, but not have the fruit of meekness, but not have meekness. I can't have the fruit of peace, but not have joy. They're all synonymous mm -hmm. with each other. Amen. You know, is if you look at it from a natural standpoint, fruit, whole fruit, was created for nourishment. It has nutrients, and it has different type of vitamins, minerals, amen, and it's supposed to be healthy. But if you only nibble or take a snippet or a portion of that fruit, you're not getting the full value of the nourishment yes. of what that fruit was designed for us. I love bananas, I love all fruit, but certain fruit, if you don't consume all of it, you're lacking nourishment. God is saying on today that he does not want us to be selective of the ingredient of what we pick from the one fruit. What are you saying on the facts? The Lord is saying on tonight that he wants us to eat the entire contents of the fruit. The fruit of the spirit, not the fruit of the spirits, not the fruit, the fruits of the spirit, it's the fruit of the spirit. So God does not want you to have multiple spirits. Amen. That could be viewed as something else. He wants that one spirit that encapsulates all of the ingredients that was just mentioned. Amen. Meekness, temperance, joy, peace, long-suffering, love, 
Amen. Gentleness, goodness, faith. He wants us to embrace the entire fruit of his spirit. Not just a spirit or multiple spirits, but these are all spirits that reflect and represent Christ. Represents holiness. How can you have this fruit of the spirit but you're lacking certain portions of the ingredients? It doesn't work like that. How can you have and then temperance and faith and goodness, but you're full of hell. What happened to the other ingredients, amen, that are supposed to counteract the hellacious part of your spirit, of my spirit, amen? In other words, when you have the whole fruit, no other spirit can interfere with this spirit. See, it takes an entire fruit to be consumed to get all of God's goodness. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, the reason why we're deficient in our spiritual vitamins is because we're not eating the entire well, fruit. Right. Not only eating the entire fruit, it would be different if we ate some of the fruit, right? And then we got our supplementation in other areas. But we're not even getting supplementation and other areas to promote, amen, uh, normalcy in our spirit. So what's happening is that there is teeth marks on the fruit, but we still got a whole lot of fruit left. And that's why we're venomous. That's why we're bitter. That's why we're church hurt. That's why we are depressed. That's why we are full of anxiety and doubt, because we have not taken on the whole fruit and nothing but the fruit. When you take on the whole fruit, whatever that you're dealing with, amen, God's word in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to through 26 will counteract all those things. I'm having headaches because I got anxiety. I got something for that. Amen. If I eat this fruit, this, this, this godly fruit is going to bring me joy and peace. So that's going to take care of my anxiety. That's going to take care of my worry. That's going to take care of my doubt. If I got hatred in my heart because I got kicked out of three churches, amen, in two years, and I'm all over the place, and I don't trust nobody, amen, uh, it'll give me love. So that's what I'm saying is that when we take on the whole fruit, and nothing but the fruit. God will be glorified. Yes. Paul was encouraging the Galatians and letting them know that those things that you used to be a part of, you have to totally denounce those things. Those characteristics that were ungodly, you can't bring them into this marvelous light. You can't still serve God with faith, but you still got witchcraft, amen, witchery in your heart. Every time you go into your hallway, there's smoke and you're saying little chants and you're putting salt by the door because you don't want the boogeyman to come in, amen. You have to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you. You have to put away the witchcraft and the idol worship, and you have to substitute that with the whole fruit. Yes. The fruit of the Spirit is very uh, rarely spoken about because people don't want to focus on the inner man. See, the fruit of the Spirit is for that inner issue, the inner things that disturb you, that come out to Light. When you see people act and talk a certain way, it's because it's something bothering them on the inside. Amen. And it's, it, it's something that it starts from the inside and then it reflects from the outside. Yes. But if you supplement yourself with the word of God, when you fast and pray without ceasing, when you acknowledge God 
on a day-to-day -day basis all day so he can lead you and guide you into all truth and righteousness. And then you fulfill the needs of your spirit man with the fruit. Amen. You will be in his perfect will. Paul was letting folks know in verses 25, if we live in the spirit and let us walk in the spirit, let not let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. See, the folks at Galatia, they have some identity issues. They like what Paul was preaching and teaching to them, but some of them still had a difficult time shaking off the old man and his deeds. A lot of them were still bringing those bones into the temple. A lot of them were still bringing, amen, the googly dust and the vain speakings and the arrogance and the envy and, and all the things that were uh, uh, against the principles of God They were trying to bring that in to this new walk of life. Yes, yes. And he was telling them that you are not to be desirous of vain glory. It's all about me. It's all about my status. It's all about my rank in ministry, my rank in life. And it's all about me. I remember, I'm not going to call his name, but it was a famous football uh, player that he's retired now. He used to say, I love me some me. Amen. He was all about his image. Amen. He was all about everything that he worked hard for. It was all about him. God is saying through Paul, don't make it about you. If you dwell in the spirit of God, amen, blessings will come your way. If you stay in this whole fruit, if you consume the whole fruit, amen, God will bless you and you will uh, 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 abide by his laws and precepts and commandments. Amen. If you live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. So you can't say that you are spiritual, but you're not walking or living in spirituality. You're not living or walking into holiness. You're saying that I love God. I, I, I want to serve him, but there's no walk. There's no momentum. And there is no life in him. God wants us to understand him closer by living and walking in the spirit. We need the nourishment of this fruit, the spiritual fruit, amen, by consuming it every day. We can't pick an ingredient per day <laughs> for the week when it relates to the fruit of the spirit. You have to every day consume God's word so it can be a part of you. Yes. When you consume the whole fruit, it will radiate out of the spirit man. Amen. When you used to curse people out, meekness will kick in. Why? Because you have the consumption of the whole fruit on a day-to-day -day basis. Not day-to-day, -day, but daily basis. Amen. You can tell the people who drink milk why. Because their bones are strong. Amen. Their hair is long and glowing. Their complexion is good. And you got that calcium and that vitamin D that's good for your fingernails and good for your eyesight. All the different things that it does. You can see that that's something that's being consumed. God wants to see his fruit dwelling on the inside of us. Amen. Some of us say, well, I, I, I have the I can help it. Well, by taking the fruit of the spirit, it will make you stronger in the Lord. Yeah. It will be that appetite suppressing spiritually when those hunger pains of lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life comes on to you. 
amen, the fruit, the whole fruit, will kind of act those temptations. Amen. You might feel a little bit of bloating at times spiritually, but you won't give in to the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. When we take on God's word on a daily basis, it is a part of us. So when things come to mess us up, amen, instead of cursing and saying things, don't snapple, amen, you'll say the blood of Jesus. Amen, why? Because it's on the inside of you. See, when it's on the inside of you, God's word, amen, it's like living waters, and it preserves you. It keeps you from falling. Amen. That's all Paul was saying that you have to change your mannerisms in Christ. You can't backbite on each other, bite and devour one another and consume each other with your vicious tongue. Amen. I, I, I'm learning as a young man that the tongue is one of the most powerful weapons you can ever Obtain. Amen. Not only in the natural, but the spirit world. Because there's life and death in the tongue. You can kill somebody as you would with a machine gun just by using that little member called your tongue. I don't know about you all, but when I was younger, about Brother Malachi's age, I, mean, I did a test study on myself. And what I did was, I was told that you hear a lot of things in ministry, amen, and so I was one of those kids, I took things uh, uh, literally, amen, when you, when you hear the Bible talking about if I had 10,000 tongues and I had 10,000 hands, I couldn't praise them enough. In my mind, I said that would be disgusting to see someone with 10,000 tongues in their mouth. I didn't realize it was talking about languages. But I thought it was actually tongues, and that was kind of creepy for me to even think about something like that. But I remember I heard the man of God at that time say that the tongue is the most uncontrollable member of the body. You can't control your tongue. So what I would do, I said, okay, I'm going to put that to the test. <laughs> I took my hand, and I grabbed my tongue. And as I kind of pinched my tongue, it's true. Physically, you cannot control no. your tongue. It's an involuntary muscle. Mm -hmm. I tried to hold it as hard as I could without throwing up. <laughs> Amen. I remember that it was wiggling. It was hard to, you know. I, I, I tried. I tried with both of my fingers. Most of all my fingers. I, uh, I still couldn't control that little member. That little member has power. And that's why spiritually God is saying that we have to be careful about what we say and what we do towards each other. Paul was saying, don't be backbiting on each other and devouring one another. Take heed that ye may not be consumed one to another. And then he was letting them know that if you stay in the flesh, if you stay in the mindset of the flesh, amen, you will lose your life. Amen. You can't act in this spirit of the flesh. I'm going backwards. In uh, verse 17, it says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the... Uh, it says, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murderers, drunkenness, 
revelings and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So why is it imperative that we have the whole fruit and nothing but the fruit? Because the word of God through the apostle in due time by the name of Paul has stated very clearly and concisely that if we stay in those fleshly mindsets, amen, we shall not inherit the kingdom of God. These people were still trying to have that form of godliness and hoard up all these previous violations uh -huh. of the Holy Ghost. These are violations to the spirit and vernacular of God. The flesh doesn't support the spirit, and the spirit doesn't <laughs> support the flesh. Amen. They're contrary to each other. Yes, yes. And that's why Paul says that you can't operate in the flesh mm -hmm. and expect to inherit the kingdom of God. That was a long list and litany of uh, descriptions of what you're not supposed to operate in the flesh. Uh -huh. You're telling me, Paul, that these are all the works of the flesh? And this fruit of the spirit is supposed to eviscerate all of these works? That's a powerful fruit. God's word is powerful. And if God's word can destroy and conquer all of these works, these are some heavy, amen, works against the spirit of God. A lot of people don't even know what some of these definitions are. Read it in your own spare time. I will give you one that I'd like to expound on. It's called emulation. When you get a chance, look up what emulation means. It means a competitive Jealousy. Did you know anybody with a competitive jealousy? They want to be like you. They want to walk like you. They want to talk like you. They want to act like you. And everything you got, they're uh, uh, competitive and trying to get the same thing or better. To say, look at me. I have a bigger car. Look at me. I have a bigger house. Look at me. Look at me. It's a competitive jealousy. But if you offset that work of the flesh with the whole fruit, mm -hmm. amen, then what will happen is, is that God will change your mannerisms, your heart. Mm -hmm. How can the world, the people in darkness, see the marvelous light if they see unnourished saints? If they see Amen. There's a word that just slipped my mind. They talk, it, it is regarding if you're, you're malnourished. You're malnourished. Amen. You have no energy. You have no stamina. You have really nothing to really keep you going to sustain your life. And if the world sees that we're those kind of people, why would they be drawn to Christ? Why would they be drawn if the little light that you have is flickering? You know how you have a little flicker of light? It's barely working. And eventually it's going to go out. Amen. But when you sustain your members with the whole fruit and nothing but the fruit, nothing but God's word, nothing but the pureness, the purity of what God has for us, you can't go wrong. Amen. We're here not just to be here, but we're here to show and tell the good news. What is the good news? Is it that you saved 15% on your GEICO insurance? <laughs> or is the good news that Jesus is soon to come? Amen. Is the good news that Jesus is still in the saving and the blessing and deliverance business. Amen. That's the good news. The good news is that
that he died for our sins and rose up again, and he is still alive today. The good news is that he is the resurrection. Yes. Amen. He is the Anastasia, the resurrection. Amen. He still lives with us on today. Uh -huh. And he's coming back. He's still a provider. Yes. He's still a way maker. He's still in control. Yes. That's the good news. But how can you expound on that news if you have no spiritual energy? You have no spiritual stamina and sustenance. Amen. Nothing reflects or displays good health spiritually. Mm -hmm. Do you know malnourished saints? They're, they're, male, they're male nourished. Amen. They can't really say anything. They can't speak on the goodness because they show no goodness inside of them. They can't talk about how great God is because they have not taken the diet of consuming the whole fruit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And because of that, their, their spiritual bones are shaken. Amen. Their, their complexion that is supposed to reflect godliness, it ain't showing that. Mm -hmm. Faith is nowhere to be found because why? They don't have the whole fruit. One of the ingredients of the fruit is faith. Uh -huh. So you have something that is for your consumption. Yes. And you wonder why you are struggling because you don't have the nourishment of God mm. and his word on the inside. When it said faith, the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him. So if your faith is in your, in your daily diet, you should be doing well. You should have to worry about, well, I don't have as much food as I had last year. Do you have food? Yes. Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not saying you have something. You got something. It might not be all the food that you want, but all you need is a little bit of faith. And God will supply all of your needs uh -huh. according to his riches mm -hmm. and glory in Christ Jesus. Without the whole fruit in your life, in your daily uh, supplementation and diet, you can't quote no scriptures because you won't believe that the scriptures are life. You won't believe that the scriptures are word. They're the bread of life. Yeah. Amen. They're for our healing. They're for our confidence. That's what that whole fruit is. Some of us, we want to puree the fruit. Hey, if it's the whole fruit and you want to puree it so you can digest it, you're still getting the whole fruit. Mm -hmm. It's when we start adding and subtracting to that fruit. Yes. Amen. We start putting other fillers and preservatives in the fruit. I remember talking about how, you know, some of us like 100% juice. Some of us like 10% juice. Some of us like juice drink. And then some of us like Tampico. <laughs> now, I know I struck a nerve when I said the T word, but if you have it, hey, that's on you. I would suggest you throw it away, but I know you just got it. Amen. And it comes it to so many different colors. It comes in orange and green and red and blue. I don't know what the blue is supposed to be when somebody said pink. So you need to check what the fruit content is because either it has 100% of nourishment or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, that means you're being robbed from your nourishment. Yes, you got it three for a dollar. A great deal. But look, you're robbing your health. God is saying on today, don't rob and sabotage your health. Amen. If you know that you need spiritual healing, you got to step away from all these different things that are destroying the spirit man, but making your flesh stronger. The Bible talks about that the flesh is an enemy unto God. 
The flesh is not going to tell you to pray without ceasing. Why? Because I'm tired. And then my head hurt. My leg hurt. My back hurt. I can't get on my knees in the morning and go on the prayer line because my flesh is saying that I woke 15 hours yesterday. Amen. But see, the thing is, is that without that nourishment of that whole food, you probably even wouldn't have that 15 hour job. See, we forget so quickly who allowed you to have the job in the first place. And one thing I love about the Lord is more than one thing, but he won't bless and curse you at the same time. If he gives you the strength to be able to provide for your family, don't you think he'll give you, amen, the strength to worship him in spirit and in truth? Amen. We have to remember what makes up, in my closing, what makes up this whole fruit. And if we don't implement these ingredients in our lives in one consumption, we're not going to make it in to heaven. What happens is, is that when we start shortcutting God, then the strongholds become stronger. Amen. The weakness becomes weaker. Amen. Those devices that the enemy uh, uh, has put against us will begin to take root. Amen. They will become a host over our lives. Paul broke it all the way down. Even last citizens. What is last citizens? Uncontrollable. Lust. I can't help it. It don't matter the type of lust. I'm just so enamored with the lust as uncontrollable. It's impulsive. It's out of control. And I can't help myself. Well, God doesn't want us to help ourselves. That's what he's here for. He doesn't want us to get our minds right so we can get ready for him to come into our lives we don't have the power or the strength to do that. He just wants us to come to him. Amen. He wants you to come as you are, not to stay as you is. I know that's not the best grammar, but that's what we understand. He wants us to come as we are, but not to stay as we is. As we are, I know it's as we are. Amen. But he does not want us to come in and stay the same way. He wants a change. And most of the things that normally change first is your mind and then your heart. And your heart has something to do with your spiritual man and your spiritual diet. What have you eaten this week? Did you eat some lust? Oh, Jesus. A tall glass of lust? A half bowl of idolatry? A spoonful of envy and murder? What have you consumed on this week? Just today. If you tasted any one of those things that Paul was telling you to stay away uh, from, you need more fruit in your life. Mm -hmm. You need more consumption of the whole fruit yes. and nothing but the fruit. Don't talk to me about going vegan. Don't talk to me about being a pescatarian. Amen. Uh, talk to me about being holy. Mm -hmm. And in the diet of men and women of God that are displaying holiness, the number one uh, 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 food is the fruit. Uh -huh. And then you have some bread. God will even allow you a little bit of carbs in your life. It's called the bread of life. Amen. So, and then we hear about us looking the wing meat. Amen. It's meat. Amen. Unto you as well. So, what I'm saying to you is that, and also milk. Remember, milk does a body good. Yes, yes, yes. The sincere milk of the word. Yes. So, when your, your mouth gets a little parched with the, the, the woes of life, that milk does a body good. Yes. It keeps you focused. It keeps you sincere, honest, pure. We want to encourage you on tonight. Yes. 
I know that for some of us, we've been battling already in the fourth month of the year. And that's why we have to change not only our mindset spiritually, but our diet spiritually. The Bible says that evil communications are good for your manners. Does it say that? Correct. Correct. Evil communication will make you more popular, amen, amongst the, the staff and co-workers on the job Correct. at the water cooler. Correct. Evil communication will get you that promotion you've been winning for, winning, Sister Doris. No, the devil is a liar. The Bible says evil communication corrupt good manners. You know what's going to help us promote in life? Having that whole fruit. Uh -huh. Amen. Being obedient and consistent and faithful to the word of God. That's what gives us favor. And I said it before. God's favor is fair. Uh -huh. Amen. God's favor on your life and my life is fair. So God wants us to, amen, ingest yes. the whole fruit. Nothing but the fruit. No fillers. No preservatives, no, you know, things that are chemically based. He just wants the natural purity of his word in our lives. The unadulterated yeah. mm -hmm. word in our lives. Yeah. And you'll see the radiance of God through you. Others will see it. They'll say, did, did you do something? Did you shave? Amen. Did you get a haircut? Amen. Did you, did you, are you working out? Something is different about you. It's because I have the whole fruit of God's word inside of me. And it's showing. It's showing. So you can't say that you got the whole fruit. And then you see me on the corner. And you're in your car and I'm in the bus, on a bus stop. And I wave at you and you say, praise the Lord. How you doing, elder? The light turns green and you leave. Well, I wasn't going in that direction. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's just not even look at a person. I like you didn't see them. Because to me, if I have a conversation with you, the least I can do is, hey, you know, do you need a lift? Offer the whole food. Hey, I have nobody in my car and I'm going to Bible class. Are you going to Bible class? Yes, hop on in. I don't want to be late. Well, you think I'm going to be late if I stay on two buses? Yeah. The whole fruit. Amen. You know what? I know that you work. I know you got a great job. But you know, we want to bless you with something. Abundance. The whole fruit. Thinking of others more highly than we do ourselves. Amen. My parents, Pastor Lady Fikes, always reminds me that you have to remember what you are standing for. And you can't say things behind this sacred desk and then when you go out in the world, you're displaying another kind of spirit. It's not the whole fruit. It's part of that 10% of juice drink. Amen. Some of us just go all the way in on San Pico. Amen. We don't even, people don't even know we're saying. You say? All that tan pico, I see you, little spirit. You say it? Now, I'm not hating on people that drink tan pico. I just despise it. I don't despise you. I just despise the tan pico that you drink. Amen. So we thank God for the word on tonight. Amen. We thank God for understanding his word uh, by and by. Uh, we have to understand that we don't make this word practical. This is a common salvation. Amen. And sometimes we're so deep in the word that we're no earthly good. We can't even explain what God is trying to convey to his people because we, you know, hermeneutics and all of our, you know, uh, uh, our biblical upbringing is so deep, but so many souls are drowning. While we're so deep, amen, so many souls are drowning in sin. Something needs to be done about that. And so we're here to be a blessing to the people of God. We would like to take this time to extend an invitation of coming to fellowship 
to you to become a part of this growing ministry. Please come visit us and fill out the form on the website, www.gwanlc.org. Amen. Remember, the fellowship, we're all about the fellowship, but we're also all about salvation. And we can't teach and preach this word of God without water baptism, the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You must be born again of the water and the spirit in Jesus. And you must receive, amen, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank God for those who are participatory, amen, in our offering and our giving. And then we have methods of giving, e-giving. We have PayPal. Give a five and cash out. And we thank you for all of your support. Amen. On this evening. Amen. Remember the whole fruit and nothing but the fruit. God bless you, Jesus. And let's turn over this remainder of the service to our very own pastor, Mr. Brother Pikes. Let's receive it by shouting, Hallelujah.
spiritual warfare. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm saying today, uh, as we close, you see what's going on in the world. This is not our final destination. We're looking for a savior on a cloud. And when he comes, there'll be a trump of God and an archangel. And there will be these things that will occur. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. We're speaking of the rapture church. Yes, yes. Rapture check. Glory to God. If you're out there, you know what I'm talking about. It's going to be just that quick. Yes. May God richly bless you. The word has come forth tonight by our very own Elder Fikes. May God richly bless you and keep you. This is our prayer. And remember this. Whatever you do and wherever you go, take Jesus with you. God bless you in Jesus' name.